In politics today, after forcing three votes for speaker, despite never having actually secured enough support, and in fact losing support on each subsequent vote, Jim Jordan finally today officially acknowledged that he lost the room. This afternoon, in secret ballot, House Republicans officially decided he is no longer their choice to become speaker. CNN reporting that Jordan lost by a rather sizable margin. So what's next? Republicans say they're going to meet for a candidate forum on Monday. At least seven Republicans say they're throwing their hats into the ring for speaker. And Kevin McCarthy is already giving an endorsement, saying he'll back House Majority Leader Congressman Tom Emmer of Minnesota, even though just hours before he had delivered a ringing endorsement of Jordan in a speech nominating him on the floor. With me now is Republican Congressman Steve Womack from Arkansas, who had voted against Jordan three times. Congressman, your conference uh, voted by secret ballot and determined that Jordan should not remain the speaker candidate. So I have to ask, in the midst of two major foreign policy crises and this pending government shutdown, what on earth was this week all about? Why did Jim Jordan force three, these three votes and waste this entire week? Well, Jake, you're right. Um... Sometimes we can be slow learners. You know, it's kind of ironic that we're doing this interview in the shadows of the Will Rogers statue from Oklahoma right behind me. And you remember what Will said about this whole business of learning. You can learn, people learn by reading, people can learn by observation, and sometimes people learn by just peeing on the electric fence for themselves. So that, that is a situation that is reminiscent of House Republicans right now that it has taken us now 17 days since the removal of Kevin McCarthy for us to be in a situation where we can at least see some clarity, some light at the end of the tunnel. But right now it's another weekend, a quiet day at the Capitol after all of the activities here and members are going home and we'll be back Monday night at 630 and we'll start this process all over again. I also know Will Rogers said, um, I'm not a member of an organized political party, I'm a Democrat. And maybe that was true of the Democratic Party at the time, but it sure describes your party right now, which is, at least on the House side, just a god-awful mess. Do you think you're going to get it together, your party? I mean, can you all rally against, all rally around someone? Like, are you, is there somebody you like? Uh, Tom Emmer, perhaps, seems kind of like a Womack Republican, maybe. I like anybody that we can muster 217 votes for. But that's, cer that's certainly an elusive target right now because of the fractures in the conference. You know, we have a, we have a lot of different groups uh, that have certain ideologies and certain leanings and certain favorites, House Freedom Caucus being one of those, and, and they were trying to prop up the candidacy of Jordan. But there was something telling today, Jake, in my strong opinion, and I, I tried to I tried to communicate this to our leadership, and when I met with Mr. Jordan on Monday at noon, I tried to communicate that to him, and that is, Jim got 194 Republican votes in the open on the House floor about five hours ago. And then we went, uh, went down to the AC5 in the privacy of our conference. Now, that, that tells me that he was not nearly as popular yeah. among our colleagues as he was among a lot of people that have given me a lot of advice on the phone here over the last several days. So we, we, you know, we voted Tuesday, he was down 20 of our members. He's not gonna get a Democrat vote. And then 22 on Wednesday, and then we wasted Thursday and came back on Friday and then it went to 25. And it was about to be a lot worse if we'd have gone to a fourth vote. But, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna try to come back Monday and restart and see where, where it takes us. So may I humbly offer you guys some advice? Have you considered ranked choice voting? <laughs> where you do your first and second and third votes and then maybe you can at least come up with like top three and like maybe that would help you achieve some sort of compromise yeah. candidate because that really might not be a horrible idea and really we need a speaker like the yeah, country needs a speaker this isn't about you know prom king like we need a functioning legislative branch yeah well that, that's the obvious and we'd like to be able to deliver on that but uh, we seem to have a hard time understanding 
that in a narrow majority where you can only lose four votes, and it may be less than that if, uh, if your members aren't here. And so, you know, you're at 217. You got, we got 430, I think 431, 432 members in the, in the, in the entire House, and you got to get 217. And, and there is a litmus test, and Democrats are not going to vote for a Republican nominee. That's just the way this process works. But, you know, if, if that's going to be the case, then you got to get 217 in your own conference, and as fractured as it is, and, and let me tell you, Jake, there's some deep wounds right now. There, there are some hurt feelings. There are some angry people. And um, I know, but you it, know what? None of us out here care. Really, I honest. know. Well, like, it's just like, get over it. We see Nancy Mace. One of your members blocked Nancy Mace, and then Nancy Mace made a kitty cat, a pussy cat, more aptly, uh, emoji at him. It's just like... Seriously, this is like high school, but like we need, like there's legislation that is, like there are literally Americans being killed abroad and we need this to work. Yeah, that's, that's kind of offensive to high school people because it's really junior high stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is really, that's a good point. This, is, this, this is junior high stuff. I mean, look, we, we get wrapped around the axle of a lot of nonsensical things, but yes, the world is burning around us. Uh, we're fiddling. We don't have a strategy. Our rules uh, direct us to do this a certain way. And quite frankly, I, I don't like relitigating the past, but uh, the fact that Steve Scalise never got a chance to get his candidacy to the, to the floor of the House and test that vote uh, was disappointing to me. And it, it, it formed the basis for why I went the way I went in every vote that I took, uh, uh, took this week. But we'll, we'll hear from the candidates. There will be a bunch of them. Uh, only one of them will survive. I don't know who that will be. I haven't looked at the field. We will hear from them Monday night and then vote perhaps on Tuesday, and it will probably be like uh, what we call Queen of the Hill, you know, we'll, the last one will be out, and then we'll go back and do it again. So, uh, look, this is not over. But, Jake, I'm going to also tell you this, that even when we do get a speaker, mm -hmm. uh, the hard lift is still out there, and that is how do you get a rule passed on the floor? How do you push legislation if you carry the fractures of your conference into the legislative body? So this is going to test leadership. Leadership has to be equal to the challenge that we can get all of our members on the rope, pulling in the same direction, yeah. not caring about who's going to get the credit if we succeed or the blame should we fail. That's the bottom line, and that's the ultimate test of leadership. Well, you have my vote. Congressman Steve Womack, appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hope you have a good weekend. And I always hope good to, yeah, always good to be with you, Jake. Hope you have